Um, talk to me about why it's taken you four and a half years to drop a new body of work. Yeah. Um, I had a lot to say. Okay. And it took me about four years to get it all out. I was told you don't stop recording until you don't have anything else to say. So I, I allow myself the grace and the time to grow in that period, to heal in that period, to learn and, you know, to really figure out all of what I wanted to say and then what I wanted to share with the world. Yeah. That was it. I think, too, like sometimes people will put out music just because they feel like they have to or right. just for the sake of putting out music. Yep. But there's not an intention behind it. No. And usually that's when we get. Like this microwavable music that people don't live with mm-hmm. that doesn't it's, age well. It's there for the moment, and which is okay if that's what you want to do. I'm just not that type of artist, right? You know, um, I want to put out things that will stand the test of time. That'll be a blueprint for people to look back to. That will be a soundtrack for this life and the next. You know, so. What was your like? Where did you draw the most inspiration for this body of work? Um. Musically, uh, Lauren Hill's Unplugged. Mm. The honesty, the rawness of it. I love it. the Unplugged. Her yeah. and Jay-Z's got the best two Unplugs ever. That You ain't never lied, bro. <laughs> a day in your life. <laughs> um, so that was a big inspiration. Probably the biggest. Um, honestly, that's that's where I really pulled from the most. During the pandemic, I would drive to New York six, seven times and just play that album over and over again. Other than that, it was just like... Things I would read, right. Untamed by Glennon Dole was a book that I read. Um, James Allen, Twenty One Books. It just it just really allowed me to give myself permission to be human, right? And that's what fed everything else. Do you feel like? Because I always when when you're brought up, you're always brought up as like one of the elite MCs. Period. Like regardless mm-hmm. of gender. But since 2017, since 2020, mm-hmm. you know there has been like a huge. You know, I feel like we used to have these female MC conversations and it's now just turned into like ladies are kind of running hip hop now. In mm-hmm. my opinion, they're I mean, mm-hmm. all the big hit records are. Yeah. Women. They're, they're, they're only the only women who are making like I feel like the women are actually putting effort into quote unquote records. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I feel like now like the, it's it's been. I mean, the, the last time I remember it being like this female dominated or at least so many options out there was like when it was Eve, the Brad, yeah. Little Kim, Foxy Brown, like. But it's, I feel like it's even bigger than that now. No, yeah, absolutely. Like, do you feel like we're kind of like in the middle of like a special moment when it turns to just females running hip hop? I do, I do. Running it in this way, I don't think we've seen. I don't think it's ever happened. No, Because even back then, there was Jay-Z, there was Nas, yeah. there was Death Row, there was all Maybe that. at the same time. And and two, it was, uh, yeah, this is just different. It's, it's and just everyone's got different. their own thing. Like, it's it feels good. And, you know, it, for the most part, everyone's working together. <laughs> for the most part <laughs> yeah which is exciting and i think it, it helps the moment yeah. right um and it's needed the the woman's voice her perspective is needed i love to see in the mainstream a lot more harmony but um it's it's exciting you know for sure yeah um you obviously got uh, erica badu on the, i heard the erica yeah. badu record on the way over here what do you song. think that was amazing yeah I shout love out to it erica too. man oh come on She's she's out here. Do, she got her own weed strain now too. Yep, cookies. Yeah, with I cookies. mean, with she's, cookies. it's with it's burner, called yeah, yeah. Uh, that Badu. And she's got her own perfume that I think she does. I didn't know about the perfume. I want to say it's a candle or a per, so, oh, you talking about the incense? She's got something that's the supposed Badu to pussy? smell like her Badu pussy. I yeah. got a I got a box at the house. How's it smell? It smells amazing. Does it smell like water. It smells amazing. Good. I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, was that something that you sent to her? Or did you guys actually get in? Um. Uh, how did I get that? She uh, she gave it to me as a gift uh, for performing at uh, her birthday bash. Fire. Yeah. I have two boxes. And no, no, no. I'm talking about the record. The record. No, I'm not talking about oh, the, I thought we were still pussy on sense. the bottom no. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the record. Yeah. Um, I was in Dallas, Texas working with S1, and I, I did... Uh, I had did two verses. The second verse was different than what we have now. But um, at the end, I left the hook open because I, I knew I wanted a singer. And he was like, yo, who you hear, rap? I said, I only hear Badu. And like, you're in Dallas. I'm in Dallas. So uh, he reached out because I didn't have her contact at the time. Um, and she said yes. And, you know, we continue to work on it for about eight more months. But 
it was a beautiful time. We never got in the studio together, but, you know, we text. She FaceTimed me and sing melodies for the hook. Um, she shared lyrics with me. And it was just a beautiful process yeah. of creating a record and building a friendship. Right. Like, one of the most gifted artists we've ever seen, creative style icon. But her heart is beautiful. Like, amazing. 